What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today's video is going to be all about the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF ticker symbol INRG or ICLN depending on which broker you choose. So we're going to go through five points which you can see on screen. Firstly we're going to go through the holdings within this clean energy ETF. We'll then have a brief look through their exposure and diversification across different markets and sectors. We'll then look at their performance over the last 3, 6 and 12 months. We'll briefly look at their top stakeholders and finally we'll go through my plans on adding this iShares Global Clean Energy ETF to my grow portfolio on eToro. So with all that being said, let's get straight on into today's video. So firstly, just a very brief overview of this ETF if you're new to this. Now again, there's currently about 78 holdings in this iShares ETF at this moment in time, which we'll go through in a few seconds. Now we can see it currently has over 5.1 billion in net assets. It pays a distribution on a semi-annual basis and is currently trading at about $19.80 a share roughly, we can see on screen there as well, and it's been trading on the NASDAQ. Now if you've seen any of my prior videos, probably from a few months back, you'd realize that I did hold this ETF on my old portfolio on Trading212 and I was quite bullish on this ETF and nothing has changed there at all. In fact, the price has gone down since, so if anything, I'll be buying more, which again, we'll discuss my plans later on. But again, it's no surprise and doesn't take a genius to realize that clean energy is certainly the way forward. And again, the older kind of school oil and gas, etc., will eventually start to die out and these clean energy sector will take its place. Now the reason I don't want to buy individual stocks within this sector, as we discussed previously in prior videos as well, is because it's pretty much a beginning in its infant stage, and there's a lot of different subsectors even within this clean energy. So I do want to have an overall basket approach, again, as this is going to be a lot of kind of new additions to the overall market going forward. So I believe this basket approach within the sector is best. Now, in terms of holdings as well, as stated earlier, there's currently 78 holdings within this ETF. Again, I'm quite happy with this because I remember starting to invest into this ETF last year and there was only about 30 or so holdings, which again, didn't work out for them considering their top holding at the time, Cloud Power, had some accounting difficulties, which definitely crashed the overall ETF. So I believe they have kind of learned from that experience and they're starting to add a lot more funds into this ETF, which is actually good in terms of having consistency. So again, we can see here the top kind of few holdings. The top one at the moment is Enfys Energy. Currently has about 7.33% of the overall holdings. Now, again, there's a lot more here on screen, such as Consolidated Edison, Vista Wind Systems and Ars that make up the top three or four holdings. But again, I believe they have kind of plans on actually adding even more holdings to this ETF. I think their target is around 100. I could be wrong there, but I believe it is around the 100 mark they want to have, which again is definitely better in terms of having less volatility within this ETF. In terms of exposure breakdown and diversification, this is definitely one of the main reasons why you should hold an ETF, particularly in clean energy. We can even see on screen here in terms of exposure breakdown, all the different subsectors within clean energy. So again, as I only want about 12 holdings overall in my eToro growth portfolio, we currently have 10 at the moment, predominantly in tech. But again, I did want to make some room for clean energy because it definitely will be a growth sector throughout the next 5 to 10 years and on. So again, if I was to buy all these individual stocks, it would have way too many and it would take too much effort to actually keep on top of. So again, this basket approach is personally my better opinion or option here. Now, again, we can see on the left, their exposure breakdown. The top one is electric utilities, which consists 25.33% of the funds. And some of the other top holdings then is semiconductor equipment, renewable energy, heavy electric equipment, etc. And you can see, even if you want to pause the video here, you can kind of see the rest down below as well, the smaller percentages. But overall, it's not just exposure breakdown why I want this basket. Again, it's because it has a global diversification approach as well, which I have a brief look at now. We can see in terms of global diversification on the little map on screen here, all the highlighted countries are where this has exposure in, which again, is quite promising because it has a lot of different areas across the globe. But it's no surprise that the US is the top holding here with 39.26% of the funds located within the US. But again, happily or surprisingly enough, that is, that a lot of the next few countries are within Europe, such as Denmark and Spain. But then we kind of go, kind of go across the water again, over to Canada, China, Portugal, the UK, etc. So again, I'm very happy with the diversification here, not just in the kind of sector diversification, but also in terms of global diversification as well.
Now, in terms of business ethics, now, admittedly, I don't actually look into this most of the time when investing, but again, it's interesting nonetheless, and it actually is nice to see that this iShares Clean Energy ETF, I suppose no surprise, but it has 0% holdings within the likes of some weapons, nuclear weapons, tobacco, we can see over here, terminal coals, etc., which again, going forward for the overall planet and kind of communities is very promising to see, and it's certainly one of those kind of investments where you're actually investing in the future. So if we look at the one year chart here as well for this ETF, it doesn't look quite promising. But again, as a long term investor, you need to realize this is actually a great opportunity to get in. Now, obviously, that's not financial advice, but it's my own personal opinion. Now, we can see here on Tuesday, January 12th, which was this time last year, the NAV was trading at about $32.29 a share. And ever since, it has had a bit of a crash. Again, a lot of the markets over the last few weeks in particular have been on a downtrend. And we can see here, even since November, it has been on a downward spiral as well after a bit of a bull run between the end of last year. But again, it's currently trading at about $19.81 a share, which again, in my own opinion, is a good entry point. So if I am to buy this shares or ETF, which we'll discuss later on in my plans, but if I am to buy this, I will be only buying a small amount at the start. And if it drops further in value, well and good, we'll actually start buying more to get my overall average cost down, dollar cost average. And if it goes back up in value, well and good as well, we'll just keep the current holding that we had and build up a bit of a cash reserve waiting for the next dip. Now, in terms of my own plans going forward, as discussed at the start of the video, I am thinking of adding this iShares Global Clean Energy ETF to my growth portfolio in eToro, where we currently have 10 holdings. Now, we only started this portfolio a few weeks back and we only have about 170 dollars or so invested which you can see on screen now we currently have the likes of tesla here as well disney apple etc etc down the list here as well but it's predominantly in tech so i do want to have some bit of diversification across different growth sectors and what better place to put it than clean energy as a consistent growth portfolio so again that would that would be my 11th overall holding here and there would be room for one more now if you see my video last week we kind of discussed adding ARK Invest to ARKK ETF here in as well. Now that's all about innovation, which again, probably just like clean energy has taken a bit of a beating over the last eight or 12 months or so, which again, in my own opinion, might be a good entry point if you're a long-term investor to dollar cost average down. Now also following on from that as well, I'd be very interested to know in the comment section below, if you hold this ISHERS Global Clean Energy ETF, ticker symbol ICLN or INRG, again, depending on what exchange you are invested on now again if you don't hold this etf i'd be interested to know as well if you're bullish on any of the kind of subsectors within clean energy and if you hold any individual stocks again i'll be open for discussion in the comment section below and i'd love to know your thoughts on this etf going forward and if you believe it's worth investing in or if you're going to avoid this etf so that's pretty much the end of today's video i just want to give an overview on my plans on investing in this etf in kind of summary, we had a look over how it's performing over the last year. We had a look at their top holdings, some key characteristics, exposure will kind of break down in terms of diversification and subsectors, etc. And my own kind of plan going forward for this ETF, which no doubt I'll give you updates on throughout the next few weeks if I do actually invest in this iShares ETF. So thanks very much if you made it this far. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you all in the next one.